Hey friends, it's Kari from the Alfred Homestead and today I am sharing with you this project that we just completed. So we created a biochar kiln. So if you don't know what that is, it's basically a cooker, a giant cooker to create our own biochar. If you don't know what biochar is, this is what it looks like. It's like a very fine textured charcoal and it's different from ash in the sense that it was cooked using pyrolysis. So it's cooked in a very low oxygen environment and it sounds like glass when you crunch it and break it up. It's very light and it has a bunch of pores in there. And I'll go into depth about it a little bit later, but all of this is beautiful in the garden. Biochar will reduce the need for fertilizer in the garden and also help deliver minerals to the plant roots more easily. And actually, there was a study at Cornell that estimated if we converted the residues from commercial forestry and crop production, if we converted that into biochar, we could offset as much as a third of the U.S. carbon emissions from, from fossil fuels. So it also adds in moisture retention, so this will be a wonderful addition to our soil increasing all of the microbes and the lovely bacteria that help to build up our soil over time. Okay, so what you're gonna need are two drums, two steel drums, one larger than the other one. We have a 35 gallon and a 55 gallon drum here, and we are gonna essentially cook the smaller barrel inside the larger barrel. And we're gonna need like a little chimney head for this as well. So we've got these parts, it was just about $20 at Lowe's, I believe. I will link the products down below in the description box so you know exactly what to get for yourself. I think the barrels cost us um, $20 or $30 each. So the whole product was probably about $50 to $60. So not too bad, um, especially if we get long-term use out of it. So my husband already pre-drilled some holes around the larger barrel, just at the top and the bottom. And he's going to go ahead and take the smaller barrel. And he put some drills just on the bottom as well. Not too many or anything, just enough to get some airflow in from the bottom of the barrel. Because what we're going to do is we're going to be cooking wood and all the debris from our yard slowly with very little oxygen in this barrel. And that's what will create the biochar. So not only are we using our you know, brush and, and everything that would just be otherwise wasted in a bonfire, we're gonna convert that and use that as for biochar in the garden. So this will be a wonderful addition to our homestead. And instead of just wasting and burning all of the brush and, you know, everything from, from clearing the land, we're going to create it and use it as biochar. I've actually heard of homesteaders putting biochar pieces into their feeders, their waterers, as a kind of filter. So that's another idea. There's lots of ideas, you guys, so keep, keep your eye out for this movement. I think this is going to be a really big up-and-coming thing for homesteaders. So I just wanted to give you a brief glimpse of how my husband was creating those holes. He did have to oil up his drill so um, just to get it through these steel drums. So you definitely need some heavy power tools. You want to be comfortable with your power tools. I am not. My husband is the one who does this, thank goodness, because I could not do this myself. And he took a grinder. Now, he took the grinder because he had a few triangular um, cutouts, triangular holes, if you will, on the outer barrel, again, primarily for airflow, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cooking that inner barrel with a fire. So we want to have some airflow from the bottom, not too much, just enough to get the fire cooking. And this is the lid to the larger barrel. He is going to cut out the hole for the chimney. So he just, you know, traced out the outline so that he knew how much he would have to take out and centered, of course. Um, so again, he took that grinder to the top and it took quite a bit of doing. He ended up going ahead and grinding an X 
an X shape first and then cutting out the outer edge so that it was like cutting out triangles. And then he would go around the perimeter of the circle to get the right diameter. So it took some adjusting. Um, it was better to go, you know, slowly and not cut out too much at once. And then the hole, you know, would be too big for the chimney. So we just had to go back and forth with fitting the chimney in there and then seeing how much we had to grind out to get the chimney to fit. This is the piece that we were trying to make sure we fit in there properly because that's what connects it to that long tube, that metal tube that I showed you earlier that will be fitted on there as well. And I wanted to mention really quick too, there's more than one way to create biochar. Um, there is a way that you could take one of these barrels and you essentially just cook it in a bonfire. I would imagine that, that would have to be a pretty large bonfire though, and it seems pretty inefficient in my opinion, which is why we decided to go this route. However, we still had some troubles, of course, <laughs> so this was one of the issues we had, was putting this chimney piece together. It had notches that you clicked in, and some of those notches were bent, so then my husband had to go back in with a flat head to try and unbend them to get them back to the original, original position that they were in. It was just such a hassle trying to put this thing together. This was the worst part. Um, in any case, we ended up taking it inside and putting some duct tape around it to keep it closed while he snapped all of those little individual pieces together. So that worked out fine. It just took a little bit of ingenuity, I guess, to get that, to get that figured out. So he's just fitting the top on just to kind of show you how that's going to slide together to form the chimney piece. Okay, so once we have that together, he just again wanted to go ahead and fit that onto the lid. Now the interior side of the lid was red, that's what you saw earlier. Uh, the outside is blue, that's why it looks different. Um, he's just going to pull those tabs back to help secure it to the inside of the lid. So you'll see how those metal tabs get pushed back just to help secure it. Just to make sure that the wind wasn't going to blow the chimney off or you know anything crazy like that. So here we're just going to fit the two pieces together and as I mentioned we went ahead and screwed in some screws around into the top of the lid as well as screwing the two pieces, the two chimney pieces together because it just seemed very loose and we were concerned. Obviously you wanna be very careful with this project because there is gonna be a lot of heat involved. You wanna make sure that you have the area where you have it cleared of debris and anything that might catch on fire. Um, especially if this is your first time doing anything like this. So please be careful when trying this project out. Always do your due diligence and just making sure that everyone around you is safe and secure. We did not have our younger girls around with us at this time, <laughs> just our oldest, so um, just be careful. Okay, so while my husband went and finished securing the chimney piece, my daughter and I filled up the smaller container, the smaller barrel with a bunch of the brush that we had. We had a massive pile of brush and so we just got smaller sized twigs and branches and things and broke them up and filled it up. So we just, this was just a test run so we, you know, we didn't fill it as tightly as possible. Um, going forward we will but seeing that this was just a test run we weren't too concerned with filling it to the brim. Um, our little ones helping us out just to again have a cleared area where it's not going to be too dangerous to light this thing up. Okay so once we put the small barrel into the big barrel the lid is closed on that small barrel and it's filled with wood. We're going to start a fire on top of that now on that lid and we're going to put a fire around it too so we've got sticks all around that smaller barrel as well as on top of the barrel. So it's surrounding 360 degrees surrounding that smaller barrel. 
So just to reiterate the point, we are cooking the inside barrel and the wood that's inside that barrel will, will cook in a low oxygen environment so that we get biochar instead of ash. If you cook in just like open air like a bonfire well then what happens you get ash and that's you know that has its own use in the garden as well um, but biochar is a completely separate arena when it comes to this so the biochar is gonna occupy so much space in the garden for for bugs for bacteria for um, nutrients and it just offers so much to the home garden for basically hundreds of years from what I've been able to see. So once you do the work, it's done. Um, okay, so we've got all of that wood around the barrel, so in between the two barrels, and we're gonna start our fire on the top, on the top lid. It sounds uh, counterintuitive, I guess, to start the fire at the top as opposed to the bottom, but this is going to really help slow down the burn. We don't want a super fast burning fire because we're trying to cook the insides. So we need to have a fire that's going to last long enough to cook thoroughly everything inside. So we just went ahead and lit it. It probably took a good 15 minutes of getting that fire going on top before the fire went around the perimeter and started making its way down the barrel. So once you know that that fire has started around the perimeter, the sides, then you can go ahead and continue on to the next part. So you can see that fire is blazing now. Be very careful now at this next stage when you have to put the outer lid on, which attaches the, the chimney to the outer barrel and you want to secure it well you know you don't want it flying off or anything like that make sure it's very well secured and tight onto the barrel again so I don't know if you can see this it's hard to tell in the video now there's gonna be smoke initially but for the most part there's not a lot of smoke and you really should not see a lot of smoke we ended up going back inside because this was the first burn and those barrels are painted, not to mention there was the duct tape that we sh probably should have just taken off beforehand, but that's fine. So we let it burn off. That, that smoke is literally just from the paint. That's not from the fire that's burning inside the barrels. So we let that burn. It probably took, I'm not sure, an hour to two hours to completely burn because it just wasn't slapped full of wood. Um, but still be very careful. Of course, it's gonna be very hot still. And you can tell that we still needed to go back and secure that chimney a little bit better. It was a very windy day, so, you know, we're just gonna have to secure it with some more screws, but no big deal. So this was the end product. Again, we didn't have a full barrel because we just wanted to test it out. But this is the next day, okay? Don't, you know, you can see the paints completely burned off and you know things are probably still having a chemical reaction in here you guys so when you open up your container the following day you know just don't don't try and mess with it like my husband is right here is what I'm trying to say um, hose it down with water first because there's still possibly chemical reactions going on even if it seems like everything's cooled down so it kind of you know it it like crunches like like glass almost when you touch it. It has a beautiful sound to it and everything just sort of snaps. That's how you know you've completely cooked that wood. So that is 100% biochar right there. Put it in your animal your animal's water. Put it in your garden. You have to um you have to find all the ways to use it because I'm telling you this stuff has so much potential in the garden and on the homestead. And if you've already got all of that brush and twigs and everything to, to burn because you're either clearing out land or cutting up firewood or what have you, then what a perfect opportunity. Instead of wasting that fuel, now you can convert that to biochar, which would reduce your need for fertilizer. It'll help balance the pH of your soil and help increase those microorganisms that make your soil alive. 
So I will be sure to make a separate video on how we apply this to the garden and look forward to that so that you can understand the whole process from start to finish. But for now, we just wanted to give you a really solid idea of A, how you can make a biochar cooker to create the biochar and why you would even want to do that. So if you have any experience with biochar or making biochar, I hope you drop a comment down below so that others can see how you use it in the garden. Thanks you guys, I'll see you next week.